In the 1920s and the 1930s, there was a deep divide between funda fundamentalist and modernist. This controversy developed between those who believed the fundamentals of the church as permanent ideals and values that never changed, and those who viewed them as evolving principles that changed with time and new discoveries and culture. This split was prominent within the Presbyterian Church and other Reformed churches, but it eventually spread to include most Protestant denominations. There were many fundamentalists and modernists during this era that became famous for their efforts and beliefs. One of the modernists of the era that impacted the way the fundamentals of the faith and the direction of missionary efforts overseas was Pearl S. Buck. Pearl S. Buck was born in Hillsborough, West Virginia, and as a local, I've heard about her my entire life, it seems. I've traveled to her birthplace and learned about her literary accomplishments, but I was never aware of her religious beliefs, and I certainly was never aware that she played a role in the fundamentalist modernist controversy. Regardless, Pearl S. Buck was born to parents that were Southern Presbyterian missionaries to China. Shortly after her birth, Pearl took her first trip to China. She would eventually start her own career in China doing mission work, but also teaching English. Buck is more famous, though, for writing her book, The Good Earth, for which she won the Nobel Prize in Literature in 1938. Pearl S. Buck had modernist views when it came to the fundamentals of the church and the missionary effort. Her views were displayed to the public and became incendiary sparks after giving a speech at a Presbyterian luncheon at the Astor Hotel in New York City. Titled, Is There a Case for the Foreign Missionary? Buck tells the audience that she does not believe that China needs an institutional church. She wonders whether the mission movement in China would be forever restrained by, as she says, an authoritative, unchangeable, and exactly phrased body of doctrine. Buck believed that the doctrine should change with the needs of the time and location. She did not believe that missionaries who did not understand the Chinese people and culture would do any good to force would do good to force their religion on the Chinese. She believed more in humanitarian efforts and helping the needs of the Chinese physically. She never saw the purpose of preaching salvation to the hungry, the cold, and naked on the streets before first seeing to their physical needs. She said, I can never have done with my apologies to the Chinese people. And in the name of a gentle Christ, we have sent such people to them. We have sent ignorant people. We have sent mediocre people. We have sent arrogant people. We have sent supersti superstitious people who taught superstitious creeds and theories and have made the lives of hungry-hearted people wretched and more sad. Her views and her speech sparked much debate in America as her speech was reprinted across the country. Some supported Buck and agreed with her fine and sound argument. Some called her a prophet and likened her to other famous and prominent missionaries. Others denounced her as a cynic. They saw her as the cause of new unrest and commotion in the church. In the Indianapolis Times in April of 1933, Buck was accused of holding heretical, heretical views. Her accuser was listed in the article as Reverend J. Gresham Matchin. The news, this newspaper claims Buck as a sympathetic understanding of the Chinese peasant and that she drew the fire of Reverend Mr. Matchin because of her sharp criticism of missionary activities in the Orient. Many on the Presbyterian Mission Board demanded her to be fired, but before it could come to, Buck, come to that, Buck resigned. Despite her resignation, she remained a prominent literary figure, writing 80 more books in addition to articles, scripts, and speeches. She was even dubbed as one of among the 10 most admired women in the United States in 1966. Pearl S. Buck was only one of many who became skeptical of evangelical Christianity in the first half of the 20th century. Her outspoken words on how unnecessary foreign missions were spoke to many modernists at the time. She became a thorn in the side of fundamentalists and she helped to persuade others to her cause. She was an admired woman and a leader in the liberal beliefs of the age. Her inf she influenced the divide in the world of evangelicalism along the lines of fundamentalists and modernists as she stood firmly on the side of the modern.